All right, fellas, this is just something I want to talk on real briefly. Using hate as motivation. Do you use hate as motivation? Why not? Why the fuck not? What is wrong with that? I love using hate as motivation. I don't think it can be the only source of motivation, but I love using hate as motivation. I love taking motivation from anything that I can possibly grab it from because that shit is a, a, a precious resource that not a lot of us men have. A lot of us are walking around with small dick energy. A lot of us are walking around with low testosterone levels and it shows, it's physically proven. Why not? Why don't we talk about this shit like it's, like it's wrong? Like, no, you shouldn't use hate. You gotta be a loving person. Oh, you hurt men, hurt men. Get the fuck out of here. What the fuck is wrong with using hate as motivation? I love using hate as motivation. Because this is the thing. When you receive that hate, which you inevitably will, especially as a man in today's society, where masculinity is seen as offensive, is seen as toxic, asserting yourself is seen as toxic. Then when you receive that hate, what are you going to do with it? Because one of, two, one, or one of two things can happen. Either number one, you're going to internalize that shit. You're going to take it to the chin. And it's, and it's going to resonate with you. Because whatever you don't use, it'll resonate with you. So are you going to let it resonate or are you going to use it? Are you going to use it as fuel to the fire? Especially if you're going through some hard times right now, you have to use that negative emotion. Because what else do you have? What else do you have right now? You don't have any fucking positivity when you're in the pits of drug addiction. You don't have positive emotion when you're fucked up, when you're down bad, when you have no friends, when you have nobody that you feel like is in your corner. You don't have any positive emotions. So what the fuck is somebody to tell you to use positivity? Who the fuck are they to tell you? Bro, this is the thing. <laughs> the only reason I say these things, the only reason I even have this channel in the first place is for a fucking meaning. Because it's, it's, it's a truth that we are being blinded from. That you need to want to improve yourself and you need to use those negative emotions. Why are we, why are we disguising this? Why are we throwing up this fucking smoke screen? Like men just gotta be these fucking little angelic creatures nowadays. Why are we doing this? This shit is killing motherfuckers. It almost killed me. It almost killed me. And it's easy for me to forget that too because time just passes and time starts to heal those wounds. But then something just wakens you up to the fact that, damn, I used to be there. I used to be where you are. I used to be there hating the world because everything felt like a lie. And I, I, every time I tried to do something nice for somebody, I got fucked over. You know, you help people out and they fuck you over. They, they overstep that. They overstep that boundary.
This is really the thing, guys. Do you really want to improve? Do you really want to improve? I don't think a lot of you do. Do you really have a burning desire to fix your fucking life? Because if you do, you will use everything in your power to do that. You have to be resourceful, not just with the physical shit you have, but with your energy. How do you use your fucking energy? How do you use that negativity? Do you want to improve? Do you want to? A lot of you don't. You don't want to make more money. You don't want to have more success. You don't want to improve your mental health. Or maybe you do, but a lot of you don't really want to improve the things that are necessary to improve your mental health. You don't want to make more money. You don't want to you don't want to have a better quality relationship. You don't want to have better quality friends. You're content with the ones you have right now. You don't want to have a higher quality lifestyle. You're content with the lifestyle that you have right now. But this is the thing about contentness. That shit will drive you crazy. That shit will drive you crazy. Like, if you're not using hate as motivation, what are you using it for? Are you bottling it up inside you? Because you hear that shit. I don't think you guys realize. I don't just say shit just to say shit. I say shit for a reason. I used to be content. I not even content, but just like I used to not care. I used to not care about life. I used to not care. I used to take everything as a joke. You know, my drug use was a joke. My college education was a joke because I didn't care. I didn't have any genuine interest in it. And when you don't have genuine interest in something and you're just going through the motions, you tend to take it as a joke. But that's what you guys are doing with your entire lives. I don't tell you that you gotta wanna improve. I don't tell you that you gotta have this love for life just out of, oh, here I am on YouTube helping men. No, I tell you because I fucking been there. I fucking been there where I said, fuck it, I don't care. I don't care about my life. I don't, I'm cool. I'll just go down and play my fucking banjo by the river. That type of mentality. I see a lot of men, I talk to a lot of men nowadays who have that type of mentality. It's like everything is a joke. Everything is a goddamn joke to me. Their job is a joke, their woman is a joke, their friends are a joke. The whole conversation that I'm having with them is a joke. Are you in the gym, bro? No, I just like to play with my cat and dog. <laughs> and smoke weed. It's like, <laughs> how do you feel doing that, dude? <laughs> I feel, I mean, I don't feel the best, but it is what it is, you know? Well, how's, how's your sleep doing that, dude? I'm, I'm, I'm getting seven, I'm getting five, six hours on a good night. Yeah. How, well, are you tired all the time? Yeah, I'm tired, you know. Man, that's gotta feel like shit. See, the thing for me was that I just experienced that extreme, you know, getting, getting into the fucking pits of addiction. That was the best thing that ever happened to me. Everything in my life that happened to me up until this point is the best thing that ever happened to me. Cause even though I'm broke as shit right now, even though I don't, I, I'm completely just 
my life is just, you know, sometimes it's very surreal looking at where I'm at and just being like, where, how the fuck did this happen? But all this shit was the greatest shit to happen to me because if I would have never had that, I'd have still been doing the same shit and not knowing. That's the thing, you guys are ignorant. You don't know. You don't know that you need this, this love for life until life becomes so fucking hard to where you can't fucking breathe. You don't know that you need this love. You don't know that you're bringing the people down around you. You don't understand that 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 your alcohol usage on the weekends and you're coming with a lower energy is bringing your mother down. Is bringing your family down. It's bringing your girl down. You don't recognize that you not hitting that wake up time and then sleeping in and then feeling fucking, you know, in the gutter about it is bringing your fucking mom down. Think about that. Think about that. You got to have a desire to want to improve your life. For me, it was the addiction. For me, it was just seeing myself get that low and then overdose and, and realize how everything just crashed down on me. That was what taught me like, Finn, you gotta wanna improve. Like you gotta have a love for life. It can't just be you floating around. I think about, I, I would have been living the same life as everybody else that didn't happen to me. I'd have been, I'd have been working a, a, a nine to five where I'm just content and I'm just dating a girl and we're just, you know, our relationship is depolarized and I'm showing up to this job and I'm going back to my school for homecoming events, my college, you know, going back there, drinking with the boys. Every weekend I'm out drinking with the boys and it's just, we don't realize how much pain that causes in your life. These micro traumas that just accumulate over time. When, you're, when you end up and you're 50 looking at your life and you got knee pain, knee surgeries, hip surgeries, because you haven't been taking care of yourself. And now you can't even walk right. And your, and your wife is not looking at you properly. And now it's causing her pain because she's got to take care of you. And she doesn't feel like you're the man that you once were. And your kids don't even respect you. Like, do we take this shit personally? Do we take this shit personally? I don't think you do. I don't think a lot of you do. I don't think a lot of you think about it that deep. And this is the problem we have because we, we tell men not to use those negative emotions. Everything is gonna be all right. Don't use that negativity. You should be pissed about your life. You should be pissed that you wake up and there's acne on your face. You should be pissed that you look in the mirror and it's not 100% exactly where you wanna be. You just put in the minimum effort required. I used to do that. Life becomes so fucking meaningless when you do that. And you realize how much harder it makes your life when you start acting like that. You think it makes it easier to put in the minimum amount of effort. It makes it harder. Because now you have all this regret and this karmic debt that piles up on you. And all the pain of the people around you that you're causing. 
Bro, that was so painful for me to look at. Like, I didn't even take it. When I woke up in my in my in my in the hospital bed after I overdosed, my mom was crying. I was like, stop fucking crying. Like what what is this about? I was like, stop fucking crying, mom. Stop being so dramatic. Dad, stop yelling at me. You think about it, it's like, damn, you know? I'm causing all this pain and I'm not taking it seriously. Like, I, I really wish the worst shit would happen to you so that you could feel what I'm saying right now. I wish you would lose everything. That'd be the greatest thing that could ever happen to you. You gotta start, you gotta start embracing that negativity inside of yourself, that criticalness. You gotta be insecure about yourself. How can you feel secure about yourself? You guys are fucking jokesters. You're jokesters. Until shit hits the fan. And then what? And then what? When you can't eat. When you don't have a car, when you don't have a girl, when you don't have anybody to depend on, then what? Oh, well, you're thinking a little bit deep, Finn. What? I'll never be there. <laughs> you, you think you're making your life easier. You're making your life harder. Life, life becomes easy when you just put in all the work and you can look at yourself at the end of the day and say, I did everything that I could. Even if it doesn't work out exactly how you want it to, I did everything I could. Did everything that was in my ability. As long as you're being honest with yourself and not short, it's not, as long as you, being honest with yourself and not bullshitting that. That's when life becomes easy because it becomes a repeatable system. Wake up, get on the grind, wake up early, cold shower, meditation, hit the gym, go to work, come back, run, stretch, eat, side hustle. It becomes a system and you start to wanna actually live, your testosterone levels start to go up. You start to love shit more. You start to find more meaning in shit. <laughs> Man, but you, you wanna wake up, you wanna sleep till, sleep till noon on the weekends and wake up and play video games and watch a movie. And eat fucking bacon and pancakes. It's not just about you all the time, bro. It's about everybody else. It's about, just think about all the, the, the low levels of pain that a lot of men are living in nowadays. The low levels of trauma that so many men are living in and just fail to acknowledge it. Fail to realize it. Don't wanna talk about it because they're too pussy to talk about it. They're too pussy to talk about it with other men. We avoid those conversations so much, huh? We avoid those conversations. Anything that gets a little bit emotional, you guys bottle up. What about that is, is masculine? What about that is productive? What about that? You gotta find a deeper meaning to this life. You have to start looking at everything like it's very serious because it is. I'm not just coming on here as a motivational speaker, I'm coming on here to, to get it through you. Like you are living in pain right now. You are living 
in a low level of trauma, when you wake up and you're fucking, your knees hurt, and you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, and your dick doesn't even work like it's really supposed to, it maybe gets up 75%, what you guys are living life living life living life like 75 percent 60 percent 50 percent 40 percent start using that hate as motivation when you're at the bottom and you this is why this this feminist fucking agenda i don't even know who's promoting this fucking agenda this agenda that we can't feel negatively. We can't put our negativity out there into the world as men is exactly what's killing us. That's exactly what's driving guys crazy, driving guys to, to bottle up and fucking play video games all day, cause their mom's pain, cause their dad's pain, their girlfriend's pain. Not men coming and expressing how they feel and letting that negativity out of them. That's not what's causing, that's not what's causing the world issues. What's causing the world issues is men bottling the fuck up. Not using that negativity, not using that hate as motivation. Not having that burning desire for life. It's what it is. It's all it is. It's all it will ever be. So, that's the topic for this video. Just think about, you just gotta have a, a better desire for life. And I, I realize that I'm not gonna reach about at least 80% of the guys in this world. At least 80% of the guys will just continue to live ignorantly. You can't reach them. And so for them, I hope that, I hope that the worst thing happens to them, to wake them up. And that's what it is. And you have to open yourself up. You have to use that negativity because if you don't use it, you start to resonate with it. All that hate that people give you, you start to bottle it up and you start to either consciously or subconsciously use it to deprecate yourself. And I hope that you could take something away from this. I hope that you start to use it. And I hope that you realize as you start to use that hate, as you start to use those negative emotions in order to improve yourself, people are gonna shit on you for it. People are gonna tell you that you can't do that. And people are gonna try and shut you down, but you gotta continue to do it regardless because it's not, it's, it's about love. It's about love for them. All right? That's what it is. Hey, what's up, guys? I wanted to give a quick shout out to my trainer, Finn. Um, I just joined the program probably, I would say, a couple months ago. And me coming into the program at first, I was really struggling at just, like, creating a balance between my fitness and my life. And I, I felt like... The hardest part about it was that I didn't really know what I was doing in the gym. Like I came from working out with trainers in person. And then basically after I finished working out with my trainers in person, I wanted to basically be able to work out by myself because I felt like I was um, educated enough. You know, I was in really good shape starting working out with Finn. And the cool part about it is, is that after um, me starting the process working out with Finn, I actually really had a framework for my workouts. So Finn actually created my whole workout program that I'm still following right now, as well as also my macros. And he did something that, that I actually was scared to do, which was to actually increase my calories because I was in a pretty low deficit in my calories. I was pretty lean, but at the same time, like I wanted to get more muscle and I was wondering why I wasn't getting any muscle. And Finn actually upped my calories. Um, and it's crazy because I'm in probably the best shape I've ever been in my life. Um, from a strength standpoint, I'm lifting the most I've ever lifted consistently, and I feel way more confident in the gym. I feel way more confident in my clothes, um, and I'm just excited, really, 
to see what he has planned for me because we're gonna be transitioning from a bulk to more of a cut, but I'm gonna be cutting uh, sustainably and not just starving myself, but actually cutting in a way that is gonna allow me to be able to not be hungry, but also at the same time to still maintain my strength and my muscle. Um, so I would just recommend fitting anybody. I would say he's very down to earth and he has a no BS like guide to actually being able to either lose weight or put on muscle or all the above. So check it out.